I want to talk to you next about uh, the history of television news. Uh, as you know, I think it's really important to understand the context of where our media comes from. And when you're talking about uh, news and mass communication, uh, TV has, has played a large role, particularly in the 20th century. So first I'd like you to consider a question, and that is, what do you think are some of the biggest stories in the history of TV news? And think back, of course, you, you haven't been alive during the entire history of television news, but think back when um, historical events you, you may know of from the 1950s to the present. Uh, what do you think are some really significant events that TV news uh, might have covered or some events that you remember seeing footage of? I have a partial list for you here. Um, some of these you may have thought of, some of them you may not have, some of them you may not even be all that uh, aware of, but um, just a few. Uh, one is the the uh, assassination of John F. Kennedy and the aftermath of that. That was a huge event for television news. That was in 1963 uh, when TV was still relatively new. Uh, the Civil Rights Movement, especially in the 1960s, was a huge um, thing that was covered on television. And in the video I'm going to uh, encourage you to watch, you're going to see how television may have helped influence the civil rights movement. Um, there's some perhaps some interesting parallels to uh, the current Black, right, uh, Black Lives Matter movement and how that is covered by the media. Um, some others, uh, the Vietnam War uh, was was one of the was really the first war that was covered by TV news. And in the video you're going to watch, uh, I think you'll see some really kind of perhaps shocking footage of the coverage of that war. Uh, the Watergate scandal of the 1970s involving Richard Nixon, the September 11th terrorist attacks, Hurricane Katrina, you may remember some coverage of years ago uh, when President Obama was elected, especially the first time. That was a huge media story, uh, and TV news covered that a lot, as well as when Trump was elected in 2016. So I want to give you a little bit of a background here on some important names in TV news history. And these you, you may well not be aware of, but um, I still would like you to, to be familiar with these names because they're really kind of pioneers in, in news and in television news particularly. Uh, the first one is Edward R. Murrow, and he's pictured here on the right. Um, Murrow uh, was a pioneer in radio coverage uh, during World War II. And he actually uh, was in London during some of the bombing of London and was reporting live back to the United States about what was happening. Um, in the 1950s, he had a television show that was called See It Now. It was kind of a news interview show. And one of the big things that came out of that show was um, his interview with Joseph McCarthy, which is this guy right here. You may remember from uh, American history, um, the term called McCarthyism. McCarthyism basically is the um, idea that, or the times when um, there's sort of a witch hunt against a particular group of people, particularly um, a political witch hunt. And um, Joseph McCarthy was a senator from Wisconsin and he became infamous um, after the 1950s for kind of leading this investigation, this congressional investigation into communism. Um, and it, it, the, it became known as the Red Scare. And there was all kinds of um, congressional hearings, uh, bringing people forward, asking them questions, really wrongly um, accusing many people, including many celebrities, including many uh, movie stars and TV actors of the day of being communists when, when really they were not. Um, but back to Murrow over here on um, Murrow's television show, he interviewed uh, Edward R. Murrow. And basically, you're going to see some of this in the video you watch, but basically um, just laid him low and, and exposed him on television um, for what he was doing and really pointed out how, how misguided this congressional, um, this witch hunt was into people's lives. Um, another big name in the history of television news is, is this guy you see pictured here. Um, his name was uh, Walter Cronkite. 
this is him um, in the 1960s. This is him much later in the 1980s. Um, and he was the, the anchor of the CBS Evening News from the early 1960s until his retirement in 1981. Um, interestingly enough, and he's kind of famous even today for um, having this recognition, but he was voted the most trusted man in America at various times. Um, there were various agencies that did these polls, like who do you trust in, in, in the United States? And uh, Cronkite was voted the most trusted man in America. It's, it's really a contrast to how we think about uh, news reporters today. I, I think many people really mistrust um, media news reporters. But, and, and it's not to say that everybody uh, in, in, in the time loved Walter Cronkite, but he was, he was very well respected by most TV viewers and was very trusted. Um, there was a saying at the time, and again, not everybody believed this, but, you know, if Walter Cronkite said it, it must be true. He was that trusted. He was that respected. So he came on the evening news on CBS every evening. And you have to also have to remember, this is the time when there was no internet, there were three or four channels, uh, television channels in most markets. Um, so your, your, especially your electronic, um, news media was very limited, but many people believe that Cronkite, when he said something, you know, you could believe it. He was, he was that trustworthy. Um, in the video, you will also see, um, coverage of Cronkite, um, and his reporting on, uh, the Kennedy assassination in 1963. And this, this moment right here is actually when that happened. Um, and, uh, Kennedy was assassinated in an afternoon in Dallas and, uh, CBS interrupted a soap opera to bring Walter Cronkite on the screen to, to break this news to America. And, and you will see in this video, uh, Cronkite kind of takes off his glasses and almost starts to, to cry a little bit. Um, which, is an interesting moment because it really, I think, um, gives you an idea of the, the gravity of the moment. And especially if you consider how well respected Cronkite was at the time. Um, Cronkite, you know, was an anchorman throughout the 1960s and 70s. And think about what you know about that era in American history. Um, lots of things going on, civil rights movement, Vietnam War, Watergate, um, anti-war protests. And, you know, he would come on the evening news every night and just kind of explain what was going on. There was something about his demeanor, and, and you may pick this up in the uh, the video as well, but there was something about the way that he said things that he was kind of a calming presence for many people. Um, but yeah, those are some of the, the big events um, that happened. One of the, the most significant ones when it comes to Cronkite is uh, the Vietnam War. So as I mentioned earlier, and as you will see, the coverage of the Vietnam War on television was different than um, anything that I think Americans had seen before, and maybe different than anything we've seen since. So so one of the interesting things about Cronkite and his coverage of the Vietnam War was early on in the war, in the early 1960s, he seen, or mid-1960s, he seemed, he seemed to support um, the American effort in Vietnam. Later on, he pulled his support. And... Um, Lyndon Johnson, Lyndon Baines Johnson, or LBJ, who was president at the time, um, when Cronkite pulled his support for the war, said, uh, reportedly, um, said, if we've lost Cronkite, we've lost America. Meaning that Cronkite was so influential that if he was coming out against the war, that a lot of Americans would really respect that opinion and perhaps change their minds about supporting the war effort. Um, before we go on and, and discuss Cronkite a little bit more, I'd like you to think about this question. Are there any newscasters that you think are that influential or this influential today? Are there, is there anybody in the TV news world or really the, the media news world who holds enough um, sway with, with opinions that they could, you know, perhaps change many people's minds about the course of a war? Um, a little more information about uh, Cronkite and the war. Um, and you will see some of this again in the video, but, um, in 1965, relatively early in the Vietnam war, Cronkite did this report where he actually went out on a mission with some pilots who were flying over, uh, Vietnam. And he said this, 
this is from Cronkite. Uh, B-57s, the British call them Canberra jets. We're using them very effectively here in this war in Vietnam to dive bomb the Viet Cong in these jungles beyond Da Nang here. And then he, Cronkite turns to the um, uh, guy he was flying with, the pilot, and said, well, Colonel, it's a great way to go to war. Interestingly, uh, three years later, the, the war was not going well in the United States, uh, well, in public opinion in the United States, but it was not going well in Southeast Asia. And Cronkite came out with a report in 1968 saying this, and this is this, so this is a, a photo of him from that 1965 report. Here he is reporting in 1968. And Cronkite says, uh, for it seems now more certain than ever that the bloody experience of Vietnam is to end in a stalemate. To say that we are closer to victory today is to believe in the face of the evidence, the optimists who have been wrong in the past. But it is increasingly clear to this report that the only rational way out then will be to negotiate, not as victors, but as an honorable people who have lived up to their pledge to defend democracy and did the best they could. And that was the point where apparently uh, Johnson, who's pictured here, uh, who was president said, if we've lost Cronkite, we've lost America. Again, it's kind of in interesting to think about the influence that Cronkite may have had in perhaps um, influencing the course of a war. Um, so if we fast forward uh, about 15 or 20 years, I wanted to give you uh, a little bit of a, a, another touchstone in the uh, history of television news, and it involves this guy, Ted Turner. So this is Turner when he was uh, relatively young, and this is him um, years later. And you may you may know this name Turner, you may not, but um, he's he's pretty well retired now. But um, uh, all of the cable networks, like uh, TBS, originally stood for Turner Broadcasting System, TNT, Turner Network Television. He was a pioneer in cable TV in general, but um, perhaps he's best known for starting CNN, uh, Cable News Network, in 1980. Um, okay, and you have to remember, too, this is when cable TV was relatively new. Um, and people were turning to places like Walter, like CBS, and, and listening to Walter Cronkite um, to get their news. And when Turner, he had this big personality and um, liked to make money and liked to try to impress people. And um, he announced with a lot of fanfare that there was going to be this uh, new network called CNN. It was predicted to be a failure. Many people um, really did not see the need or the purpose behind having 24-hour um, uh, cable news. Like, why would anybody want to have 24-7 um, access to news? <laughs> it's kind of um, naive in retrospect. But um, I mentioned Turner and CNN here because it really was the first cable news network, and it really uh, changed how we think about, or how the uh, media industry anyway, thinks about news. So, you know, again, in the days of uh, three major networks and anchors like Cronkite, you waited until 6.30 in the evening and turned on the news, and that's the TV news that you got. Otherwise, you read the newspaper and maybe listened to the radio, or maybe, maybe looked at the local news on television. Um, Turner came along in the 80s and said, nope, we're gonna have to, we're going to have 24-hour access to news. Uh, the news will always be on, and that's what we're used to today. Um, and CNN is all over the world. Um, and as you know, there are multiple 24-hour um, cable news channels these days, um, very influential. Fox News, MSNBC um, get pretty good ratings these days. And, and you know, news events are covered nonstop. So I've been referring to a, a video throughout this video um, that I'm going to encourage you to watch. Um, the video you're going to watch is it's well i'll be honest with you it's kind of old but i still uh think it's valuable to see because it does a good job of showing you some of this footage of television news from the 20th century okay and one figure we i kind of touched on briefly uh in this video but one figure who will uh pop up again and again in the next video i want you to watch is uh president richard nixon so the video you're going to see um, kind of jumps around in the timeline of Nixon's political career. Um, so you may want to refer back to the slide as you're watching the video just so you can keep all of this straight. Okay. So Nixon is a very interesting 
figure in television news and how he was covered and, and how he appeared on TV. Um, he was never really comfortable in front of the TV cameras. Unlike, um, someone like, uh, Trump, uh, Nixon just, uh, never really took to the television cameras. And, you know, I don't think they ever really took to him, but this timeline again may help you, um, as you watch the TV news video. So, um, Nixon kind of first came on the national political scene uh, in 1950. Uh, he was from California and he was a congressman from California. And the 1950s was again that era of, of McCarthyism and just this kind of um, really concerned by many uh, people in society about communists. So Nixon came out as being someone who was really um, an opponent of communists and was going to hunt out, hunt down all communists he could find everywhere. Um, and there was some television footage of that. In 1952, um, Dwight Eisenhower was running for president and was considering Nixon to be his vice presidential candidate. Um, and you'll see this in the video, but uh, it was kind of an interesting moment because there was some scandal at that point, way back in 1952, regarding Nixon. And uh, the scandal involved campaign contributions. OK, so Nixon kind of took the bull by the horns and bought some television time in 1952 and made the case that he was a respectable man. So Eisenhower was thinking about dropping uh, Nixon from the ticket and, and not having him be, you know, his, his vice presidential running mate because of this um, scandal, this fundraising scandal. Uh, Nix Nixon bought some time on television and made what's become known as the checker speech. Now checkers was a dog and, um, the video, you'll see some of this, um, uh, some of Nixon talking about checkers, but, um, so basically Nixon changed the topic of conversation from, uh, his, his campaign finance problems to this little dog. Okay. He, in the speech says, um, somebody gave our family this little, uh, cocker spaniel dog. My daughter named it checkers and we're not giving it back. And somehow that saved him that speech, uh, the checker speech saved him, um, politically. And he ended up being the vice presidential candidate. Eisenhower won the presidency, won two terms and Nixon was the vice president the whole time. Okay. Um, at the end of Eisenhower's term, that was 1960, um, Nixon decided to run for president and his democratic opponent was, uh, JFK, John F. Kennedy. Um, interestingly, uh, and you'll see this too, um, Nixon, uh, and, and Kennedy, uh, agreed to have a television debate. It was the first televised presidential, uh, debate ever. And, um, as you'll see, well, you can form your own opinions, I guess, as you watch it in the video, but Nixon did not look, did not, uh, come across well, uh, on television. He looked kind of, uh, nervous and sweaty. He had been sick and in the hospital, apparently, um, soon before, uh, the bait, um, Kennedy, on the other hand, seemed relaxed, um, and, and very confident. And it was quite a contrast between the two, um, it was also said at the time that people who had listened to the debate on the radio thought that Nixon won or had done a better job, um, you know, raising good points. Um, but those who had watched the debate on television thought that Kennedy had won just because he looked so much better. This was one of the first times that, that politics um, and the power of television kind of came together. Um, so, Nixon obviously did not win the presidency in 1960. Kennedy won. Um, in 1962, um, just two years later, Nixon decided to run for governor of California. He lost. And you'll see this in the video as well. But he, Nixon never liked the press in some ways similar to Trump today. Um, and kind of goes off on them in 1962 after he loses, um, uh, the governorship of California and says, you're not going to have Nixon to kick around anymore. I'm done. I'm done talking to you media types. I'm out of here. Well, we know that didn't happen. So, uh, in 1968, he ran for president and won. Um, uh, he actually, uh, won reelection in 1972, but 
1974, the Watergate scandal kind of overtook him. And it's interesting, as you will see in the video, he kind of melts down on television. Um, and as the pressures of Watergate um, close in on him and he talks to the press, he, he does not do well again.